All right, so welcome to Mission and Formation. I have oh, one of my best buddies yes. of all time. Yeah. We have known each other. A long time, bro. Like 20 years. Yeah. Wow. Something like that. Time. I know. Dude, wow. that, makes you, that makes you feel old. It's close. I don't think it's quite 20, but I was. That is crazy. I think I was 21 when we started working together, and I'm 40. So we're, we're getting there. That is wild, bro. It is. It's been uh, a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Nothing but a pleasure. Wow. I wish my wife would say that about our marriage. <laughs> 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 nothing but a pleasure. No, nothing, but, nothing but a pleasure. <laughs> no problem. Hey, I'm telling Just you, a pleasure. I'm telling her this. I'm telling her. <laughs> she may listen. Maybe she'll listen to this. That'd be good. Hopefully she'd get tickled on that if <laughs> that's the case. Oh. Uh, I think all husbands wish that were the case, right? Yeah, that's true. Wow, that's, that's right. True. That's right. So Travis and I have all kinds of conversations right and yeah. something that we've been talking about i guess for even months like we brought this up maybe even a year or something like that is so let's frame it up like this so jesus and john the baptist their primary message is repent god's kingdoms appearing it's that is at hand yeah. um jesus gives his disciples you know the same kind of message they're going out doing that um, before he leaves he says wait be empowered by the spirit because you have a message yeah. You got to be witnesses to this yeah. resurrection, all this kind of stuff to the kingdom. And there's this proclamation of the kingdom that's to go out into the world and rest and wrestle. And Travis and I are wrestling with what does that look like, especially in the American context? So what does it look like? How can we like proclaim, live out the message of the kingdom? in a culture that has it seems like a lot of challenges let me ask you this first do you think that this generation is particularly challenging or are we just old heads that are finally like in the midlife and we're going like other generations i just can't connect to them and we're not going to just talk about like gen z and millennials but i just that's just want to start there yeah, that's that's a great question. The first thing I'll say is when you talk about uh, Jesus announcing that and sending his disciples to announce it, remember he said, Terry, that's old King James language, in Terry. Jerusalem until you receive power <laughs> from on high, yeah. until you receive the spirit. So, so the first thing I would say is, in other words, don't try this on your own. That's good. <laughs> you are that's not right. going to be able to do this. They weren't going to be able to do it without the spirit then, and we're not going to be able to do it without the spirit now. So I, I was <laughs> actually uh, teaching this last week, and I had just thought about how absurd the message of the kingdom and the resurrection actually sounds a Jewish rabbi <laughs> yeah. dies, but he's not dead. He's really alive. Insane. And the only way millions of people have been touched by that message. is <laughs> because the spirit yeah. of God. So. It's a scandal. It's an embarrassment. <laughs> it's the Jews were like, what? Are you yeah. kidding me? <laughs> the, 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 yeah. Anyway. But um, uh, to your question, man, I think it's both. Uh, I think I agree. prior to our generation, my parents, my grandparents, I mean, everybody was believing the gospel, right? It was, it was, it was a given, right? I mean, you know, that was, was, it was not as as challenging. There's no way it couldn't have been. It could have been, you know. But now people are, you know, giving their minds to other things, and you know, you would think that because they have more biblical access than That's than true. our our folks did, they have an audio and video. I mean, they can get a Bible anywhere. Yet it seems that this is the most illiterate time when it comes to the Bible now. So, is there? too much access because like they're you know in the countries and places where you see the kingdom spreading it's often with a lack of access do we have so much that it's become numb to yeah. us i mean is that part of it or eh? I, I think there's just too much access to other stuff yeah and there are other things that are that are competing um and people are just unprecedentedly del- unprecedentedly absolutely and people are delving into everything and you know, again, you got all the social media stuff. You got YouTube. You got every, I mean, there's just so much TikTok. I mean, there's so much. I think about my daughter. She's in this generation. She got so much stuff just competing that she yeah. want, that's entertaining her that she's looking at. So these things tend to kind of kind of take a backseat. And and many times they're just not as rooted. Yeah. Sometimes we didn't do the best job of rooting and grounding and rooting them as well. So as parents, we got yeah, to take look up at that. some of that. You know, we let them spend more time doing other things than, than yeah. you know feeding them the word. So I agree. Like I think. I 100% agree with you, actually, that there is, like, the, the both and. Like, yes, there is probably a little bit of old head. Like, there is a disconnect from generation to generation that I think. But 
I think it's an unprecedented time with social media and I mean, you see things like unprecedented depression rates. You, yeah. I was on, I've been on social media and actually I put like a little uh, blocker timer thing on mine mm-hmm. that like after five minutes, it says like, Too much. get off. Yeah. Get if off, you, right. Yeah. And so that to keep me from doom scrolling or whatever they, sure. they kind of, you know, call that or whatever. But I've been recognizing as I've been like looking at that, not only do you have like the perfect pictures of people like posting there, but you have so many ads. Like I was sitting there going like, the more I'm on my computer or social media, the more I want to buy stuff. Because oh it's my like, gosh. I know, no, like a hundred percent. And you're like, oh, I want to do that. Oh, I, but then that creates this, I don't have, I don't have, but they yeah. have, I really want that. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy, I mean, man. I can, I can tell myself I'm not buying anything for this amount of time. <laughs> and then I'm scrolling Facebook and something from Express is right there. And I'm like, oh, I got to have it, bro. <laughs> I got to have it, bro. And the game is over. Like They got me. They got me. <laughs> you know, they got me. It's over. <laughs> I mean, that's real. And that's what, like, those are the kind of things that, like, our kids and, I mean, we're dealing with. Yeah. And even us, like, talking about proclaiming this message and living it out to our generation, you know, millennials or whatever, whatever we are. I don't remember. Anyways. Um, like, how how do we do that whenever you do? We, we have so much competing for our yeah. attention, so much competing for our loyalty. Yeah. For our worship. Yeah. Like, it's just out there, man. So how do we become a a voice and I don't know if you want to say it, a, voice, a voice that people actually listen to with all these like competing voices all around. Wow. That, that's a big question. <laughs> I know, a we may question. have more questions than answers. To uh, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm pull back a little bit. Cause I think what I'm starting to see now is that I don't know how serious we are about the message. That's right. Yep. I'm with you. We've got good news, bro. I mean, the Christian hope, when we really, really break it down, is the best news ever to anybody, any generation, anytime, anywhere, period. True. I'm afraid that we've lost excitement for it. Yeah. That's kind of where my mind went this morning as I thought about this conversation we're going to have is I think that there are generations that are longing, and I don't even like to use this word because people overuse it, but mm-hmm. an authenticity mm-hmm. of like, people actually believing and living something that's radical. I'm going to go back yeah. to our days at Think Link and Discovery. This is a place that we used to work together. Sure. And my brother, who was kind of faith wrestling for, mm-hmm. for a while, and I just remember him saying, at one point, I really appreciate, I don't want to sound like a pat on the back, but you and Travis, because I'm, you guys aren't perfect, but... I've never seen people at least believe enough to try to live it out like I've seen you guys. Most of what I've seen is people going to church, mm-hmm. maybe reading their Bible a little, maybe. Mm-hmm. And, but you're trying. Sure. But that's, that's, I don't know if that's an indictment on like what a lot of Christianity has, is. Um, is that has become just kind of a a church going thing? Yeah, I mean for sure, church going. You know that hour and a half or more for some churches, and, and that's kind of the big event. And everything else is just whatever afterwards. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not, instead of taking that with you, I mean, the fact of the matter is, what we do in an hour and a half that that is has very little to Correct. do with I agree. what yeah. <laughs> the Christian life is all about. I mean, to relegate it to that is just, I mean. That's, that's horrible. Jesus would be very disappointed in that, and he is, and we've done that in some some sense, I think. That's right, because I, I feel like it's almost, at least in America, the primary duty of the believer is to attend church, mm-hmm. and we would love for you to give. We would love for you to volunteer some. Yeah. But it's almost like kind of self-helpy almost, yeah. right? Like we go when we sit down, we hear a message, and maybe I'll jot something down that might improve my life a little bit. Right. It's very consumeristic. Oftentimes. Oh, very much so. You know, give me a good message. You know, don't offend me too much. I'd like to get it in. That's good for my children, you know. And then after that, we'll just kind of forget about it until next week. Yeah. Uh, the word is not made flesh, if you will. That's good. good we, don't, point. we don't become the living epistles, right? Look at that language. <laughs> it's true, though. Don't, don't say that to anybody on the street living epistles. <laughs> That's what? not the way to proclaim Freaking weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What is an epistle anyway? That's the old school in me, man. That's old school. So like us doing, the church doing self-reflection. 
on yeah. what it means to live in God's kingdom ourselves. I mean, at the end of the day, like we're a people living under God's rulership and he owns us. He rules us. Yep. That's going to show up. It ought to show up. But there's, there's expressions of that in our lives and our ethics and everything that we do. And so that's what the world needs to see. They need to see, they need to see God's power on display in us. And when they see that, it's going to automatically be provocative because it's God's power. Yeah. I think that we're not cooperating with God as much as we should. I agree. I've had on my mind a lot uh, Isaiah 58, which is where God, there's multiple, plenty of places uh, in the scriptures where God is talking to Israel about, you know, chastising them or talking to them about the issues that they have. And one of the things that really kind of stood out to me was like Israel is actually crying out to God going, we're fasting and praying and we don't hear you or we're, we're not hearing anything from you. And his response being, well, that's because whenever you fast, you're oppressing your workers. You know, he goes on to say things like, you know, was this the fast that I choose? This is the fast that I choose to feed, give bread to the hungry, uh, you know, to fight or whatever injustices, like all these things. And like, I'm just sitting back to bring homeless into your home. <laughs> <laughs> Man, please. But that, that to me, like Jesus, a sermon on the Mount echoes a yeah. lot of that kind of idea yeah. of to, if you have coats, give two. He talks about the way we deal with retaliating with people like the church. I mean, do we, are we doing any of that kind of stuff? I mean, some are. Our actions, our ethics should make the world be like, who in the world are they? Yeah. <laughs> right? I agree. No, and I then agree. many times in a good way, like, wow, I want to be like that. That's like, right. We're talking about God's power coming up on us, right? Yeah. I mean, that that should just blow the minds of the people that are, aren't, aren't believers. But, I mean, again, I don't I don't think we're cooperating with that power. We don't, we're not cooperating with the Holy Spirit that's there to guide us and lead us and help us accomplish God's will, like, that's the cooperation that's necessary for us to do it. And I just, I don't know, man. Yeah. It just seems like we, we, we struggle with that. Because we can, we can, you know, uh, you've taught me back in the day, whenever I, I think I quoted St. Francis of Assisi one time and said, you know, preach the message or whatever, proclaim the gospel at all times. And if necessary, use words. And I think yeah. you were like, Hey, you got to use words. Yeah, you definitely got to use do. words. But the words do need to be backed up yes. by real life. And I think that people have heard messages and we still need to keep proclaiming the message, 100. percent But we also have got to back that up with a counter cultural kingdom, upside down, right side up. However, we want to look at it compared to the culture. To they go, oh, wow, there's like actually substance to yeah. what they're talking about. Man, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you reeled me back in because I'm always preaching now. You got to use your voice, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I remember my, my the older folk would say stuff like, you know, you got to live the gospel. Let people see a gospel, and that's fine. One of the problems that we're headed into, and I think we're already there, and I'm telling you right now, this is going to get real interesting, because in some ways, we, you know, we're cool with that. I'll just live, and I'll love, and I'll be the best person I can be. Okay, and that's cool, right? That's not disrupting anything, truthfully. I mean, matter of fact, you know, the, the fruits of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, those are good things. Those are awesome things. Everybody's going to like that. But it's when you start using your voice, when you start talking to people about the gospel, when you're trying to influence them, that's where we're going to run into a problem. And I believe politically right now, I think where we're headed is that Christianity is going to be okay as long as it's a private faith in your home, you know, with your family, right? Sure. Do not come trying to influence and what they would say is pushing your faith on other people. But mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is this, we have to use our voice. Sure. Christianity sure. is about expression. It's about expanding. It's about influence. There's no way we can be Christians without using our voice and talking with people. I mean, in Acts 4, you know, the disciples were told, do not speak anymore in this name. They were never forbidden to live like Jesus. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah. They, they were never forbidden to act like Jesus, but they were forbidden to use his name. Yeah. And I think that's where we're headed into, and that's where it's going to get real tricky. I think that's right. I was looking at some stats from Pew Research today. Surprisingly to me, I guess maybe surprisingly, I think it was 81% or 83% believe that there is a spiritual realm still. Okay. So like there's a lot of people that like believe in the spiritual things and stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. But if there is no message pointing them to truth, then they could see us kind of doing some things or being nice folks or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, but I do think that if we live really radically, 
that it's going to be, it is different than just being mm-hmm. love, joy, peace, patient. Like it Absolutely. is like, like bringing homeless people into your home is pretty radical Absolutely. and people can be like, what are you doing there? But right. you do have to use that message. It reminds me of the, the Richard Dawkins clip. Yeah. 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 So you oh, want to share a little bit about that? Yeah. And I haven't watched him in a while, man, but honestly it, it was just more of, he admitted it. He admitted, excuse me, that he is a cultural, cultural Christian. Right. And he and, likes it. And he, he likes is. it. Yeah, he was cool with it. Like he, he, he thinks it's necessary in fact. In fact, it's becoming he's he's like becoming sad about it dissipating, if you will. And that just blew me away, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like a cultural Christian, but it does make sense because when you live in a culture and society is that's pretty much been dominated by, you know, Christian values, which is insane to suggest that our nation, the West, or the West at large, has not been influenced by Christian values. Oh, yeah. You, you, you have to be just completely unaware yeah, of history to, to deny that. Uh, so even he himself said that, you know, I'm, I'm a cultural Christian, but the superstition, the miraculous Jesus, resurrection, all that stuff, get it out of here. Yeah. That's crazy. It is. But that's the root. Yeah, that is. And that, again, kind of goes back to the idea of if we're not proclaiming a message in something that's like, I mean, Jesus didn't die just because he lived right. a, a nice life right, and right. like lived pretty good values. Right. Um, no, he, I mean, he died because it was a threat to Caesar. He was a threat to Caesar. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> they were declaring there is a new kingdom here. Right. And it's not Caesar's. But he wasn't really a threat. They thought he was. Yeah. Right? Oh, I mean, <laughs> Which that's is crazy. Yeah. It, but that's, but that is the, it, it was a direct attack against, yeah. or to, you know, to the rule of the day power. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, oh wow, you know, there's a new politic. It's right. kingdom, like just what? right, no. right, right. Which would have been good for them, and they didn't realize it. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Gosh, it's, it's mind blowing, man. But yeah, that that video is a trip, and you know me. I've talked to you about Tom Holland and what he's doing in terms of you know just as a historian, an unbelieving well, historian. Well, share it. Share a little bit about it. Yeah, I mean, he's an unbelieving historian um, who's said that he would love to believe. It's really. It's a head thing for him, like, mm. which is helpful for me because I always pretty much say when people don't want to believe it's because they don't want to adopt or change their lifestyle, right? Mm. But he's willing to own that like he lives out a lot of Christian values just naturally, you know, being in the West. Yeah. And so, uh, but again, the, the superstition and all that stuff is where things get really tricky uh, for him. But his whole thing is that he 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 declared himself to be a humanist, but he really comes and says he's lost faith in that because he realizes that all those values that that humanists are claiming to be somehow you know new and fresh is really stems from being in a culture that's dominated by, by Christian, Christian ethics and Christian values and he had to just realize and just you know pretty much confess that hey I'm not any of those things I, I'm a Christian yeah right not, you know in terms of my ethics and how I live so I thought that was a beautiful but I think that's the thing he he loves you know the ethics of christianity he, again richard dawkins they love it like they want it so we've got to be more excited about it right i mean these these guys are not even believers and they're willing to admit like we need this and, and if it goes away our culture our nation our our the west is in trouble so now you understand just how valuable this has been and we're declining more and more and we're retreating from it, and it's like what are you doing like yeah. this shows we have the message man it does and that's in the declining in belief in uh, christianity belief in jesus you know whatever and the the rise is is the is the nuns is which a lot of people talk about which is this kind of like there's only i, I believe it was four percent of americans say they're atheists so very few people are like there is no God, right? But there's this rise of this um, kind of ambiguity of I'm not sure. Right. You know, I li- maybe I like Christian Christian values, but right. I'm not really ready to put my faith. Right. And that's interesting. And I actually do think that a lot of it has to do with the way the church has projected um, herself to the world, because it's like, like I, I know there's a lot of people that will see or hear of evangelical Christianity and immediately think you have to vote for Trump. Right. Or, you, you know, like the American flag sure. banner waving sure. in the church and stuff like that. And for people that can't relate to that, it's like, well, they just see it as maybe a power play or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Like the church, they're just trying to get their person off so that they can get their right. morals spread out sure. among the church. And I'm like, sure. 
politics can be important and it is yeah. like you know some of the thoughts but it's but it's, it's just i think it's strange the way right. that we are and some of it's probably media projection over yeah but it's just the way people view what we look like and they're like mm, do i really want to be part of that yeah and if you're really gonna live in the kingdom typically i mean jesus is gonna have a problem with both Republicans oh, and sure. Democrats, right? Yeah. <laughs> like he's gonna look at both of them and say, "Unless you repent, you're gonna perish." Right? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all think one is better than the other. Let me critique both of you really fast, right? My my world is and my rule and my kingdom is gonna be completely different from this. We got to keep that in mind. Yeah, as a church. Do you think that we have projected an image? Uh, have we gotten too tied up in the Republicans, Democrats, American politics as yeah, a church? For sure. For sure. I think sure. uh, what not like without a doubt it, we have, and that's gotten to where it's again that's another projection. Sure, we can proclaim a message, and then when we're focusing more on some of this other stuff. It's 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 interesting. I, mean, I just feel like we've been asleep though. A lot of the things that are emerging and taking place is because we've been asleep. Mm. You know, we we have not been cooperating with God, and we haven't been the light of the world. We hadn't been that city on the. I mean, like it, it's 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 so true for me. I I just believe we, we, we've slept. And while we slept, people have creeped in. And um, it's going to be the church. I mean, we have a major assignment to be the light in the world. Yeah. And if we don't lead, our world is in trouble. Yeah. I absolutely 100% believe that, man. Dude, that's real. And going back to the question of how. Yeah. Well, that's a big question. So getting back to that. Yeah. Like, I'll be honest with you. My story, man, haven't been out of ministry for a while. Um. I, I came to a point where it was like I did ministry preaching, you know, for so long. And so I finally got into a place when I wasn't really doing that. Like, it's like, okay, now we're going to really see if you really, really believe this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right. Are you still going to, like, teach in, in a different way? Right. Yeah. Are you still going to expand? Uh, You're going to live still, it out. Are you gonna, you, yeah. Are you still yeah. going to do this? Right. And that was that was really interesting for me, man. Thankfully, I've, I've tried my best to, you know, because I believe, I, 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 I 1,000 trillion percent believe yeah. uh, in this stuff, man, uh, to the core. But, you know, how do I do that? You know, and, you know, and when you're a pastor, I mean, you got to do it just by the nature of what you do, right, mm -hmm. as a profession. But how do you still, you know, influence people for Christ? I think that I had that kind of uh, situation similar whenever I took five years of being in full-time ministry. So, like, I've preached and done stuff yeah. for 20 years, like yeah. with Travis but it took five years to like, just try to reach people. Yeah. And then I went back into, and I wanted to go back into the business world because uh, I, there was, there was challenges and difficulties that people may not realize that you have whenever you're doing ministry full time, you're not around on people who do not know the Lord and yeah. live in his kingdom, unless you're like trying to intentionally go out and do, you know, those kind of things. But then I have that same thing where like, I'm not, preaching every Sunday now like I used to and stuff and it's like do you believe this do you believe it for right. your workplace do you believe right. it for your my neighborhood do I believe right. this thing right. and I do and I think that this maybe this these are some of the reasons we're having this wrestling because we're both asking this question right. like you know how do we prevent how does the person that's watching the video that doesn't have a pulpit right. proclaim the message right. of the kingdom right you know how does that you know and you know for me like particularly in the last you know couple years it's like we've got to be intentional man we have an that's assignment 100%. that's 100 percent right like we're on a mission as, as christians you know right i mean I, I i hear people talking about meaning and purpose and that's kind of the thing everybody's trying to find their meaning and mm -hmm. yada 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 and i and i get that and that's very important but we do have meaning oh yeah we do have purpose at the end of the day no matter what i'm doing i'm on assignment for the kingdom of god for me it's about influencing people for, so for me, every day, I wake up. I try to. I try to at least. Yeah. And I've got to make sure I'm tapped in and locked in, um, smiling at people, saying hello to people, watching people, being sensitive to their needs. Do I need to pray for somebody out here? You know, simple stuff that we can be doing to be the light of the world. But if we're in our own heads, we're focused on dinner. We're focused on work. We're not thinking about who we are at all. Sure. Then we're not going to do it. Like we have to be every day figuring out, you know, how to be the hands and feet of Jesus as we live our daily lives, whether I'm in publics, anything. Like, I'm always looking up when people, you know, pass by me. I'm like, hey, man, how you doing? God bless you. You doing okay? Just all the time I'm trying to do that because, for me, that's a real practical way to do this stuff. Yeah. Like, if you see someone in need, go pray for them. I think one of the biggest 
needs that I kind of uncovered maybe unexpectedly yeah. with the ministry full time is a lack of community and relationship in our yeah. in our real community and relationship in the, in America. So many people we think we have it through social media or like I mean think about going to church on Sundays where like it used to be it used to be I sound like an old man but like a real like Everyone, a, a big chunk of people participated. You would do Bible studies together. You'd go serve together. You were kind of, kind of living life together. Maybe not, probably not like the disciples were, but like, but, but a decent amount. And now it's like you go in, listen to a message, like you say, you don't even have to say anything to anyone, right. and you kind of leave. And like, there's this loneliness that's in our society yeah. because we don't have actual authentic relationships, and yeah. the church isn't really showing a kind of counterculture or, or, or being a light to show people. Yeah. And so what you're saying is like just being friendly to people, saying hi, like those are at least starts and you never know where that can go and you never know how much of an influence impact some of that can have on people when yeah. you're just not. Some people might be like, dude, who is that weird guy? Say yeah. hi to me. <laughs> and that's okay. I knew that. That's, I was teeing you up because I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay, man. Um you know, one of, and, and so, like, I, I think the intentionality, though, just being aware, and I think that's where we're, where we're lost. Like, we mm-hmm. were so tied to church and this thing, right? And we've forgotten, like, no, I have an assignment, bro. Yeah. As a believer, as a Christian, every single day, we feel good about ourselves because we attend a church service. And church is very important. I get, I love church. I spent yeah. mo- oh, mo- much of my way. life, most of my life in the church. I still believe that Sunday morning is very, very, very huge, very, very important. But man, we've got to be aware yeah. every day. Like when I leave here, when I walk out of here today, like when I go to get some food, like I've got to be aware and watching people that may be struggling and me knowing that people are watching me and just really, really trying to be that that light of the world yeah. in every aspect of my life. How do I do that? Asking myself on a daily basis, like, am I being the light of the world? What am I doing to be that? Yeah. Like, right? Am I, just, am I stuck in my own world, my own mind, what I got to do, my own life? My own, yep. Like, that's not going to cut it. <laughs> I've, no, I've realized that a lot lately. Like, there are days, and I, I think no matter how intentional we try to be, hopefully we can grow more and more. But there are days where I go, wow, I'll just let that date. It's like a... Like the budget, right? Yeah. Like you just let, like if you don't, if you're not intentional about how you're going right. to spend money, your yeah. money, you don't even know where it's right. gone. Right. And we, with our time and like the actions that we, like we're not intentional, right. man, our, our phones, we're doom scrolling, right. Right. we're, you know, online doing this or that, right. we're working and we can have like going back into the work, business world, like there's busy jobs. Right. You got to do a lot of work, go right. home trying to make dinner, whatever. And you're just exhausted by the end of the day. We absolutely have to be intentional. Every it's one day. of my favorite words, actually, I think, whenever it comes Every to this day. conversation. Like, Every if we're not looking, I guess I, I like to say, if we're not, I try to look for what God's doing in people's lives. Yeah, man. God, what are you doing? It's what you're saying. Yeah. I'm looking at that. That person looks yeah. upset. Maybe I should go say something to them. Yeah. You know, um, but that's it. I I think that's right. And, and then you're right also with 100% with we have to share. Yeah. And I, I think that if we are really in people's lives and we're really living life like that, yeah. that there's going to be um, opportunity, not that we just sit around waiting all the time, you know, but like there's going to be real opportunity to have real conversations. Yeah. I think the people that I've impacted the most are people that I've just gotten to know and yeah. we've just been, you know, sitting around, hanging out, you know, sure. drinking a beer, if I'm, sure. you know, or whatever. Absolutely. And just like, they're like, dude, and they start opening up about things and yeah. there's that opportunity and the spirit will get, will provide that. Yeah. If we if we're intentional, and we're doing what we're supposed to, do, God is going to send opportunities for us to to, to proclaim um, His will uh, to people. I was in the dollar store the other day, and just as an example, you know, you you're, you're getting your stuff. I'm at the cash register. You know, I'm, I'm looking down at my phone. You know, the, you know, the lady is scanning my stuff. You know, initially I thought, hey, hello, how are you? Yeah. And then I just started looking at my phone. And then it dawned on me, I'm like, dude, just, hey. What are you doing? Like, ask her, hey, you, you okay today? Yeah. Things okay? Okay. Life good? Those are opportunities that we have mm-hmm. all the time, mm-hmm. man, but we're so focused on what we've got going on. Yeah. Dude, so I, <laughs> kind of get me get me excited. Um, so <laughs> I have a friend that is a leader in a house, in a house church movement. I'm not going to say where, because it's, Like they, I can't even say their name. I don't even know their actual name, even though. (laughs) And one of the things that he was saying was when he came to America, he noticed 
everything you don't have to do much with engaging people so mm -hmm. you go to walmart you can go to self-checkout mm -hmm. you go to the gas station you just pay at the pump yeah and his his encouragement he was like and there in iran the house church is ex like the, the kingdom is exploding and he's like go pay for your gas inside what are you doing yeah. go to the checkout that isn't the self-checkout yeah. like like if you're not engaging with people yeah. then you're not going to be able to have the right. influence of the kingdom in their life and that kind of that that's made me go true that's crazy um because i mean even myself i i, I like to go to the self-checkout oftentimes and stuff like that and i still yeah. do and i don't sure. think he's like condemning like never do sure. that or becoming sure. legalistic about it but intentionality got to engage people man. i'm going to intentionally do things so that i can you engage people but the only way you're going to do that is to, to know that you're on assignment. Yeah. To know that God has given you a purpose, right? Where to live under his will, where to, to advance his His will. Like, that's the, you have to be aware of that and take yeah. it very, very seriously. And we know how to do that. I mean, our diets, you know, people are so stringent and they're looking. They got this goal, right? And they, yeah. they know what to do and how to do it, what to eat. They're paying attention. They're intentional, right? Yeah. Calorie counting. Working out, we know how to do that in every way. We know how to do that. Well, I mean, we've got to do it here because this, this means everything. Yeah. yeah. So, what do you say? Because I just I, I push back. What do you say to the extreme introvert? That that yeah. is, I'm, I'm telling you, just because sure. I've heard this a sure, lot, like sure, sure. that says, I really, it is really uncomfortable for me to engage with people. Um, they may be watching. So what would you say? Because you are you are an extrovert, no doubt about it. Sure. And I sure. am more extroverted than introverted. Sure. And so the people that are going out there going, yes, yeah, sure, you can say hi to the person at Dollar General. I can't yeah. do that. What, do you have any kind of response <sighs> to that? say hi? <laughs> Man, that's a strong, strong, strong introvert, right? Um, well, I, and, I, and I'm sensitive to that. Yeah. I there, get there's it. Some, there's some, yeah, I think it's a mistake to go, oh, just get over it. That's yeah. not. That's I'm too. sensitive to that, and and again, I, I think you have to find ways. I mean, you know, you can, you, you know, Facebook. You can send a message to people. It's fair. That's Are really you it. using Facebook yeah. for that? You know me, man. I'm always putting stuff yeah. out there, like scriptures, yeah. all the time, because this is a very easy, non-threatening way for me to just that's a good really. Point. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of introverted <laughs> friends, right? Who, who tend to be oftentimes introverted friends tend to be very deep thinkers. Yeah. I can. And like, yeah. I have plenty of that. They live in do. their minds anyway. Yeah. Right? They use Facebook or social medias to like write out some yeah. of their thoughts and to, I would also encourage people to recognize that like we, we are a, a body. That's right. So if you are intentional, I know people that are introverted and extroverted that get together and do things out go get coffee together. Yeah. Like just so they know, Absolutely. I know that Travis, you know, for example, will engage people a little more, but I'm going to be there with them. Right. But like, but that is intentionality. Yeah. That's saying like, let's figure out like, like let's do this. Like what you're saying is it's, it's, it's a command. It's what Christ has told right. us to do. This is important. Right. A lot of people's lives are in jeopardy, you know, right. it's, it's, that's it's real. And that's the thing. We have a whole message. It's not a private faith. It's not just for us. The Christian message is universal. It's for everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, we have to <laughs> we have to persuade, right? That's the goal of our faith. If you believe that Christianity is the end all be all of everything, and that at the end of the day you're either gonna be with Jesus or you're gonna be eternally separated from him, and then you realize what people are forfeiting. Yeah. Right? We talk about you know, people talk about hell and, and, and things of that nature. And I, and I get that. You know, the Bible is very clear about those things. But my thing is, what are people forfeiting? Yeah. Well, that, You're forfeiting the new heavens and the new earth. That's right? what I was going to say. Like, are you kidding me? Our message is God's <laughs> kingdom is breaking in right yeah. now. Like there's signs of, so we're going to get all, signs of new creation that, yeah. are, that, are, that, are, that are popping up all over the world all as over. we engage and we live out the kingdom. And... We're looking forward to the complete fulfillment of that Absolutely. in the return of Christ, the new heavens, the new earth. This is like, good news. It's incredible news. <laughs> but we've also um, watered it down into a salvation prayer, yeah, right? Like true. Jesus, come live in my heart, yeah. which isn't even in the Bible, but right. like, <laughs> but you know what I mean, like that, yeah. like. And so we're not. I don't think we're doing a good enough job proclaiming, right. expressing what we are saying. Like this, 
world that we see full of corruption is going to be set free. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Yeah, like it, this is all going to be yes. yeah, waiting oh, for the revealing of the sons of God as Paul. It's powerful, it's man. It's very powerful. It's powerful. So we've got to begin to get understand and get back to our message yeah. and the reality of it. Man, there's no greater message than the Christian no. hope, brother. The future that we have. That's right. I mean, everybody should want to be a part of that if they really understand it. And our job is to get them to understand, like, this is what you have to look forward to. Yeah. This world is a wreck. And guess what? God's gonna, God's coming to, to fix this. Yeah. And, and his original plan for the world that's right. is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to take place. And, and that's why you believe in Jesus. And then this becomes a whole movement. Man, this is a movement, bro. Yeah. That's right. Like, this is the whole. We want to talk about people now wanting to get get a hold of something and find meaning and purpose, and they want to be a part of, of things. I'm like, <laughs> this is this is it. <laughs> this is it, bro. Yeah. Like, if you decide, hey, I, I want that, right? My life's mission is going to be the light of the world. My life's mission is going to be to 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 spread that message. There's your purpose and meaning right there. I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> so. It's so <coughs> real, man. There's so much to that. We can unpack so much. All right, let's let's wrap it up. I'm yeah. going to wrap it up with Absolutely. thinking about some of this. Absolutely. So if we're talking about the new heavens and the new earth and that being our motivation to live, mm -hmm. one of my favorite things is when Paul says, we actually have part of that now as a down payment. And that's his spirit yeah. who empowers us to do everything that we, that's kind of where we started. Yeah. And you brought that up. Yeah. Like there has to be a relational and reliance on the Holy Spirit. Yes as we're doing all of this and he will empower like sometimes I think God's about having creative messages and being like, I think he does and cre creative pro proclamations. But there are times when I recognize I'm trying to do all this in my own power, yeah. in my own strength yeah. and not trusting the simplicity of the message yeah. of all that we're talking about here. Absolutely. Like, you know, I mean, there's, it's rich and it's deep and stuff like that, but I, I'm just saying like, not entrusting, maybe the simplicity message, not, not entrusting the spirit to empower the message. Yeah. I mean, the book of Acts should be really called Acts of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, Cause these men were, were, were under the spirit's uh, guidance. And again, Jesus told them, don't you dare yeah. leave here until you've been empowered from on high. Don't try this on your own. No. It's too big. It's too yeah. bad. You can't do it. You're not going to make it. You <laughs> here are you going to give out, right? Yeah. And from Acts 2, when the Spirit descended, came upon them. The rest of the book of Acts, you see these guys and ladies empowered by the Spirit of God, you know, centered around one message, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they're accomplishing great things. And but they're but they're committed. They're bought in. It's a life. I mean, they they're intentional. Yeah, that simple little snippet in Acts chapter two where it talks about they devoted themselves to apostle teaching. Yes, you know, to prayers like every day. Yeah, they were meeting together in the temple courts. They were breaking bread in each other's homes. Like there was rich community and rich dedication. Yeah, and the Lord added to their number daily. Those and they weren't being, being disruptive for the sake of being disruptive. Correct. Yeah. They just believed this stuff. Yeah, and they knew they had to get this message out to everybody. It wasn't like something that they were like, oh, we're going to purposely go in. Yeah. No, it's like, I believe. And I think that that's, I know I said wrap up, but I'm going to. Are you good? Gonna, go ahead. But I think that that is one of the challenges to the proclamation is like they had a message that was new. Yeah. In our culture, oh, though we haven't explained that's it. That's a whole other I know, conversation. Though we haven't explained it. <laughs> uh, well, as we've talked about, I don't think we really have explained yeah. well the breaking in of God's kingdom and the new heavens and new earth. But that is one of the challenges we face is a lot of people feel like they've heard the message. Yeah. Um, and then so how do we live it out, proclaim it in a in a way that is, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like it, sometimes it seems like we're one of those voices out of the thousand that we're talking about yeah. because they assume that they've heard the message. Right. That's the challenge. That's a whole other conversation. That is. Sorry. All right. All right. No, we're we're, we'll do it at some point. We're, we'll wrap, that, we'll wrap up this one. We'll wrap up this one. We'll do it. We'll do another one. Uh, Travis, man, thank you so we're much. Spoiled. Yeah. Now, we've had Christianity for so long. We're spoiled, man. We take it for granted. And in and, and doing so, it, it's kind of it's kind of departed from it in a sense. You know? Yeah. Not excited about it anymore. It's given. So the people that are listening, I'll let you end it. What are like a couple words of encouragement for based on this whole conversation? Man, we have the best message ever. If you're a Christian, 
everybody needs this message. They have a future. If they believe and trust in Jesus Christ, there is a future. There's an amazing future. We love life. The only time we don't like, like life or love life is when it's interrupted by bad things, suffering, challenges, sickness, heartaches, pain. Other than that, life is great. I love life when it's good. Well, let me, well, let me just True. be very clear. Uh, Jesus has promised us a good life, the abundant life. It's coming. And we're going to have a new heavens and a new earth, much like this one, uh, except for all the bad things that interrupt our happiness and our joy and our peace. Won't be able to do that anymore. And we've got that to look forward to when you believe in Christ. Man, that's big. I'm sorry I've never heard a greater message of hope than that. I'm, I'm, rock, I'm rocking with Jesus. Peter. All right. If that doesn't get you motivated, I don't know what else will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thank you, Travis. You, uh, we'll, we'll keep this conversation going another time. Love you, man. See y'all. Love you too, bro.